Hey everyone, it's Mike from Orderflows here and welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you could join me for this video. We're going to be talking about resting liquidity, okay? And if you don't know what resting liquidity it is, basically it's the orders that are already sitting in the order book or orders as they are coming into the order book. And before we jump in, um, if you've been enjoying my videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss any new uploads. All right, so, you know, there's sort of this argument that goes back and forth sometimes uh, among traders uh, what is order flow right i believe order flow is the footprint chart right you can see the orders actually being traded in the market and there's a school of thought that says no order flow is the market depth right uh you know the dome so to speak you know where orders are coming into the dome uh, or sorry the depth of the market right people are placing orders uh into the market that, that's the order flow well, it's really a matter of semantics, okay? And, you know, if you've been around the markets long enough, you understand that orders coming can be amended, right? They could be um, pulled as the market gets close. But what's more important, do you think? Traders' intentions, like where they're placing orders in the market. So, you know, say, for example, right here, right, the market was trading uh 5011 and there's a big order up here at 5015 is that important well we're four, four points away from the market okay what do you think is going to be more important what the market is actually trading right now at this moment how it's trading on the bid and how it's trading on the offer or people's intentions because when a person actually trades when a trade goes through the market generally that trader is committed to the market, right? That they have a position on that they're gonna to want to get out of at some point, as opposed to, yeah, I would love to sell at 50.15 when the market's trading 50.11, but that's not gonna happen. It's too far off the market. I mean, sure, the market could spike up, but most likely it's not gonna happen. However, that's not to say that resting liquidity is not without value to a trader. It is, okay? Because there are times, there are instances where an order will come in and it will have an effect on the market okay but i know I, I see it all too often where traders think that looking at the depth of the market is sort of like the um missing piece if you will well okay let's take a look at some of this liquidity in the market okay so this was today um what's today's date the 7th of, of feb and around 10.56, a big order came in at 50.15, okay? We had traded 50.15 earlier in the day, okay? Um, we got up there just, uh, the high for the day on this day was uh, 15 and a quarter that was made at 9.31, okay? Then we came off and you can see at 15, you know, there's not big size in there. There's 192 um, for the next hour or so, okay? And then it sort of builds up a little bit, 243. And then later here, right, around 1056, 1057, uh, a big size order comes in. Now there's all of a sudden 758 contracts in the order book at 5015. And people will say, well, yeah, that's why the market sold off here. Okay, you can see it's one of those uh, shooting star type candles where it's trading up. But then someone plops in a big order here, it gets as high as what is that, 13 and a quarter? So, you know, almost two points away. It's 1.77 uh, ticks away. So, 1.75 points. Is that enough to cause this market to drop? Well, maybe in the short term. Okay, what happens in the market? Does it sell off? Well, over the next five minutes, it, it basically it drops from, you know, 11 down to what, nine and a quarter. Now, bear in mind, right, if you're a dome trader, right, a lot of guys that trade off the dome, they're just looking to, you know, get a few ticks here and there, right? Two ticks, three ticks, four ticks, you know, back and forth. So, yeah, maybe they could have profited from this trade in the sense that the big liquidity came in here, the big order to offer uh, resistance in the market, and it dropped, you know, two points. Okay, I, I could see that argument. And then later, it's just going sideways. It dropped a little bit further, got down here to 07. The market started rallying back up, but there's no big bid down here. I mean, at, at 05, there's 202 contracts. That's not a big bid. It's not 782. And again, you know, one thing that I learned early on in the markets 
is the market is attracted to size. Size acts actually as a magnet because if you're a big trader, you want to trade against size. You don't want to be trading against a market that's illiquid. And bear in mind, right, the market today was going up. And if you're a big trader, if you're an institutional trader and you got a lot to sell, where's the easiest place to sell? It's easiest to sell in a rising market, not in a falling market. Right? If you got a lot of supply that you need to sell, a lot of S&Ps you need to sell, you want to sell it into a rising market. So am I shocked to see 782 coming up here at 15? No. Right? Just as I'm not shocked to see at 17, there's 325. Okay, so then the market dips down and finally we spike up and we trade through it, right? We, we get up through 15 and we actually get all the way up to 16 and a half. And then you can start seeing what the depth is at 18. There's 300 at 18. So at 15, 17, 18, there's decent size. And remember, if you're a big trader, it's easiest to sell into a rising market because that's just going to get bought up by um, traders are coming into the market because the market's going up. But let's take a look at when it shot up through here because this isn't acting as resistance as everyone thought it would and remember if you're a dome trader if you're trading off of a dome generally you know you're looking for to scalp a few ticks and it blew right through it got one from 15 all the way up to 16 and a half maybe you have a two point stop okay that's eight ticks but if you're just trying to scalp three or four ticks you would have been stopped out now let's go take a look here at what happened when it got up through uh, 15 here. Where is that here? So you can see the 890 traded there and then it trades 15 and a quarter, 15 and a half, 16, 16, 16 and a quarter, 16 and a half is the high, right? Then it, then it sold off. Okay. Yeah. I mean, had you had a limit order in there either, you know, right ahead, you know, everyone likes to jump in front of size for some reason. To me, that's like jumping in front of a freight train. Um, you know, you're getting short at 15 as the market's coming up to 15 and this market just sort of jumped up there. You can see the aggressive trading and you're, you're short at 15, it gets all the way up to 16. Maybe you're stopped out depending on where your stop is. That's two points. <coughs> if you had a wide stop, yeah, maybe you could take an advantage of shorting at 15 for a move all the way down to, you know, down in here where it spent some time at 07 for the next five minutes. Okay. That's a great trade. If, that's the way you're trading off of a dome or trading off of a market depth map. Now, going back here to the market depth map, right? And you see there's still more size coming in here at 16, 17. As you got closer, it started getting pulled. So remember, there was, how much was there here? At one point, I think at 17, there's 334 contracts, okay? 334 at 17. And you can see when it trades up to 17, trades 209, comes off, trades another uh, 526 on the offer. Okay, so obviously that order was iceberg. And every time you have that resting liquidity here in the market, it trades through. It trades through. It trades through. Okay, so if, if you're thinking that, oh my gosh, you know, like here right now, okay, this is what time is it? It's about uh, 115, 117 in the morning or in the afternoon, um, you know, you can see the liquidity up here at 19 and a quarter, up here at, at 20, you know, there's probably more, these, probably, these volumes, there's probably iceberg orders in here, honestly. Um, but don't think for a second that this is going to offer resistance that the market's got to reverse off of this. It didn't reverse here. It didn't reverse here. didn't reverse here. Okay, because remember, the, the key to... Trading size is size attracts size. It attracts big traders. Okay. And sort of again, there is a use for a market depth map. Now I'm not comparing Ninja Traders market depth map to book map. Book map is very loaded with features. Um, but if you if you're not using book map, if you're just looking at the raw data here of the the market depth map from you know ninja trader which basically it's just it's just taking the data off of the footprint chart or sorry off the um the dome you know people get mesmerized by size and they think the market's got to react to it no a lot of times the market will trade through it and then what 
if you if you're jumping in front of the size, right? You jump in front here. I'm assuming you got to stop in, right? And people will say, "Oh, yeah, you could have sold it up here at 15 and covered it down here at 08 or 09." Well, what kind of stop do you have? I mean, if if you're jumping in front of size looking for a big reaction, you're probably going to have a tight stop. So just bear that in mind. I guess, you know, the whole point is, you know, there's nothing wrong with looking at a market depth map. But just bear in mind that, you know, size attracts size. And sometimes trying to jump in front of size, resting liquidity that's been there in the market isn't always the most prudent thing to do. Okay. And again, you know, when I first started trading electronically it was back in the 90s when it was on the old Globex system. And I, I would just sit there all night because I worked night shift and we just watch the dome, what's trading, you know, what the liquidity is in the market. Nowadays, you, know, you got very good size. This is bonds. But if I were to put it on uh, E-minis, you know, back in those days, S&Ps were trading in the 400s, 500s. And, you know, big size then was 30 contracts. But, uh, you know, times have changed. So I guess the point is, if there is a point, people say, well, what's your point? But um, don't get mesmerized so much by size because the market is attracted to size. Sometimes it acts as a magnet. Okay. Don't think that you got to jump in front of it and try to short it. Okay. So if, if this helps a few traders save you know, themselves from a couple of bad trades, great. <coughs> I'm glad you found it helpful. Be sure to hit that uh, like button and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.